Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hey, Kat. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> well, I know what you did on Sunday. I but what know, did yeah, I did actually made weekend? it. I made it to the Blues Fest. Yeah, yes, yeah. Did. Actually, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to see a friend of mine up there singing for the first time in a long time, and that was really cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Kiana with her, her oh, new Kiana, group. Yeah, 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 that was great. Yeah, which was awesome. Well, Nice surprise. I hadn't heard them before. So oh, that was yeah. Good. Yeah. I can't wait to see more from them. So that's really cool. Glad I got to see that. And then I won some local trivia, which was always yeah, you fun. you got that one right behind you. You know. It was so funny. That was cool. I know. It, it was, was it was good. I'm just like, I'm just going to like take my, my coupon and just like disappear into the background now. And Christy after. was whispering <laughs> behind me what you were, uh-huh. she knew the answer too, but I don't think many people out there knew that. Uh, what was that again? The trip? Oh, though? they were asking about who was the architect that did the original city design yes. plan and that that was was Maybach. Yes, yeah, and she that. was saying that she was going Maybach right it's a, there. So it's an architect you two based out of yeah, 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 San Francisco yeah, architect. Right, yeah, right yeah. On. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, so, she got a free drink. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That, was, that was cool. Then that was cool for Misty Mountain doing that in, yeah. in partnership with Remax. So that was so yeah. No, oh, that was yeah. just fun little activity between bands. So yeah, I, I liked it. I had a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lori yeah. Morvan and uh, the last two, the headliners were. Oh my gosh, Lori just. Got out there with the audience and standing up, was I know, playing, playing on the guitar, guitar, playing a yeah. guitar right there in the audience. Got up on the table and danced. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that was just it's because we had the men on the men bands on uh, Saturday and then the women bands. It was girl power on Sunday. Oh, and okay. Boy, I'll tell you, what, yeah, that's why we you did know? that. That's why, it, yeah, they set it up that way, or that's what Chrissy and Nathan did. Mm-hmm. They got us up. They do the entertainment and everything for the insider events. So cool. Yeah, I get to deal cool. with the vendors and all that fun stuff, and uh, they gets to deal with the entertainment. And okay. uh, yeah, and they put together. I just they did a great job on the bands, and I was just pleased. And mm-hmm. Chrissy and I were already talking about right before this thing was even over. You know, we were sitting there talking about. It. She comes up, and she goes, "We might, have, we're gonna probably make this a three day thing." And I was like, going, "Oh yeah," you know, and they put stages on each end, like mm-hmm. almost like a mini pyre festival type thing. Mm-hmm. But, but mm-hmm. the the crowds, you were there. I mean, my, my oh, goodness, oh, yeah. Right. Especially when there was other things going on all over the place, yeah. you know, and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, well, people love their live music. Yeah. yeah. And there was a lot of opportunity to see that this weekend. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. loved their blues. And then yeah, we got a lot of big crowd after the the. Concert in the park was going on, even with the Zydeco band, which yeah. I love Cajun. I would love to see that myself. I know, but, I know. Uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. I just have to make a choice. You got to do what yeah. you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah, I got the blues fest. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate all our vendors that came on, and they them and our sponsors are what make it happen, you know, help mm-hmm. that go on and everything. So we appreciate all of them for helping out the Insider Southern Oregon events and Hope everybody got down there and had fun and, uh, yeah, got out there. Which, like I said, there was plenty going on, and we got more stuff even to tell you all about here pretty soon. But, yeah, what did you do on Saturday now? Oh, Saturday? Is that Jason's oh, still gone, and you've been— getting... You're asking me, like, way too uh, far oh, back oh, at oh, this yeah. point. <laughs> I'll let you I'll know when I remember. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I think there was gardening involved. I remember oh, okay. that. There yeah, you go. yeah. Cool. Uh-huh. Went down and— Relaxing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just got my hands in the dirt, so. <laughs> That's always Yeah, good. a little more low-key than Sunday. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Very good. good. Right on. Well, hey, we're going to go ahead and get on with the show. Before we go, I'd like to thank Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, you just got to go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. Hey, let's go ahead and get this. Man, we got, we, it's getting ready now. We I got know. a new schedule for August. August so here is here yeah. just about. Yeah. yeah. So starting things off, uh, let's look at the Brookings Welcome Center. That's over at Chrissy Field. And music there starts at 2 o'clock. On the 3rd, it's going to be Ramon LaGuardia and Donna Simon. That's uh, an acoustic guitar and ukulele duo. And then on the 4th, they're going to host Alex Ives, a harpist. And then on the 17th, it's going to be Ken Dauberpool playing acoustic guitar, And then on the 24th, they're going to have music by the Brookings Recorder Quartet. And then on the 25th, Nathan Stone's going to be playing acoustic guitar. Yeah, the recorder, that's the flute. 
Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. We had like almost yeah, like a yeah. penny whistle, but like, yeah, uh huh. Uh-huh, I learned a little, that little bigger. Yeah. I, I did that. I learned how to play one of those back it's in school. It's a classic school. part of yeah. fourth graders' music education. Yeah, yeah. It is. Okay. Yeah, it's a rite of passage. <laughs> <laughs> and much to the horror of parents everywhere <laughs> about that time. I was one of those still doing it. That was back in the 60s I when I did it. So I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Mm-hmm. Hey, and we got Stephanie Latoure and the uh, Reverbs. They're playing on the second at the Del Norte Fair Car Show on the Fair Pond stage at 3 p.m. And then on the 23rd, they'll be at Inateca at 8 p.m. And that's what's going on to the Del Norte County. Yeah. yeah. And then also Tony Latore is going to be playing on the 3rd of August doing Heart of a Legend. And that's going to be at the Del Norte Fair as well at the Pond Stage at 2 o'clock. Yes, indeed. Hey, in the Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center, they've got on the 10th, a Motley Crew tribute band. Doors open at 7 and show is at 8. Motley Crew tribute. Very cool. Yeah. And then on the 16th, we got comedian Joey Medina. Doors open for him at 7.30 and shows at 8. On the 31st, they got the Comedy Pow Wow and Native American Comedy. Doors open on that one at 7.30 and the show is at 8. On the 31st, we've got a rally at Elk Valley Car Show, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Music by ZZ Tush. And the Mighty Steelheads. Mm-hmm. And then at the Warriors Bar and Grill, music starts at 7.30 there. Uh, on the 2nd and 3rd, they got Steve Nelson. On the 9th and the 10th, they got Robert Tiernan. On the 16th and 17th, Mike Powell. On the 23rd and 24th, Jesse Mead. And on the 30th and 31st, we got Hannah Paysinger. Yes, and over at the Del Norte County Fair on the 1st of August, they're also going to have Crosspoint playing on the Pond Stage at 5 o'clock. Yep, and Cisco, he'll be playing at the Brookings Harbor Farmers Market on the 3rd, the 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st at 2 p.m. Yeah, and then Bloodline Band is going to be playing on the 1st of August at the 1st Brookings Core Response Center Open House. That event's happening again on the 1st of August at 16389 Highway 101 South. That's a new location for them at 6 p.m. And then on the 2nd, they're going to be playing at Lucky 7 Casino from 8 to 11 p.m. And on the 10th, they'll be at Oxen Free playing again from 8 to 11. Yeah, and then Mike Powell, the other part of the Bloodline Band, he'll be playing solo on the 4th at the Art at the Port, 10 a.m. to noon. On the 9th, he'll be at the Brookings Elks Lodge, 7 to 9. On the 16th and 17th, as I said, he'll be at Elk Valley Casino, 6.30 to 9.30. And then on the 30th, he'll be playing at Checo Brewing, 6 to 8. Yeah, and then Black GTO is playing on the 9th of August at the Inateca in Crescent City. Music there running from 8 to 10. And then we have Patty and Acuna playing solo on the 2nd at Checo Brewing Co. from 6 to 8. Yeah, a little slide in there. And then at PA and T-Roy, they'll be playing on the 3rd at the Art on the Coast, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then on the 16th, there'll be at Kuntai, 6 to 8. And then on the 23rd, there'll be at Misty Mountain Brewing, 6 to 8. And then the Mighty Steelheads are going to be playing on the 10th of August at the Bumbleberry Performance and Art Center in Springfield, <laughs> Utah. They're going to be in Utah. If you're going to be in Utah yeah. on the 10th, they're playing there from 7 to 9 p.m. And then on the 16th, they're playing at the Inateca in Crescent City, a little closer to home at 7.30. And then on the 31st, they're going to be playing at the Elk Valley Casino Car Show at 1 p.m. I just wanted to throw that in to let everybody know these guys are going nationwide, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I just Again, that in for little, a little like, FOMO there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. And if you are in Utah, there you go. There you <laughs> you go. can see him and go, holy Toledo, we see him all. Hmm. <laughs> hey, hey, the Italian guys, forget about it. They'll be playing on the 15th and 22nd at Kuntai at 6 p.m. And on the 24th, they'll be at the Intertech at 7 p.m. And then a ranch party playing on the 16th of August at the Brookings Elks Lodge from 7 to 9 p.m. And then on the 17th, they're going to be at Augustino's from 3 to 6. Yeah, I saw that. Augustino's out there, their little outdoor thing. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. Hey, Misty Mountain Bruin, music's at 6 to 8 p.m. On the 2nd, the 17th, and 30th, to be Long Goddard. On the 16th, it'll be Rogue Strings. On the 23rd, P.A. and T-Roy. And on the 31st, hey, they got a surprise guest. So nice one. Surprise, <laughs> surprise, surprise. There you, yeah, go. there you go. All right, let's get into some other events in August here, starting off with the schedule over at the Checo Library in Brookings. 
And for their regular events on Mondays at 5.30 p.m., they have a Spanish speakers walking group. This is a fitness and conversation group for Spanish speakers. Then on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., they've got their story time. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children. Also on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., they have a chair yoga class. This is a beginner's yoga class that focuses on seated positions. And on Thursdays at 1.30 p.m., they have their chair yoga class again. That's twice a week that you can catch that. Also on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m., they have an easy flow yoga class. This is a yoga class for beginners, which includes standing poses. It's highly recommended that participants be able to comfortably get up and down from the floor for this group. And then on Fridays at 4 p.m., they have Hora del Cuento. That's stories, songs, and simple crafts for young children, all led in Spanish. And for some special and monthly events coming up at the library on Saturday, August 3rd at 1.30 p.m., they've got their rock painting party. It's the annual summer rock painting craft. The library will provide paints and rocks if you don't want to bring your own, and rock painters of all ages are welcome. And then on Monday, the 12th of August, all day long, they've got their Spice World Spice Bags. Take a culinary journey around the world. Each spice bag features a unique monthly spice from a different part of the world. Each bag comes with a tester sample, trivia, and recipe suggestions. Supplies are limited, though, so this is only available on a first-come, first-serve basis. And then on the 13th and 27th at 5.30 p.m., those are Tuesdays, that's game nights at Checo Brewing. This is an open game night featuring games from the Checo Library's board game collection, hosted at Checo Brewing on Railroad Street. You can try a game from the library or bring one of your favorites to share. This is a free and fun opportunity to meet and connect with other board game enthusiasts in the community with plenty of table space to spread out. And kids are welcome, but they have to be accompanied and supervised by an adult guardian. Game night happens every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And then coming up in book clubs at the library for the month of August, on August 8th at 5 o'clock, they have Club de Lectora. The library's Spanish language book club encourages parents with children to attend and enjoy an open and welcoming atmosphere. And then on the 14th of August at 4 o'clock, they have their Kids Book Club. This is geared towards second through fifth graders, and kids vote on and pick the books they read each month. Also on the 14th at 4 o'clock, there's the Freshly Written Book Club for Adults, and this club focuses on fiction and debut authors. And then finally, on the 22nd of August at 5.30 p.m., they have their monthly Pub Grub Book Club. This casual book club is for adult fans of graphic novels, and it takes place off-site at Misty Mountain Brewing in downtown Brookings. This month, the group is going to be reading and discussing I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young. And if you have any questions about programs or events happening at the library or just need more information, you can always get in touch with them by calling them at 541-469-7738. You can check out their full event calendar at checkolibrary.org or you can follow them for updates on their Facebook page. Wow, yeah, a lot going on at the library. In August, August, yeah, August. August. Oh, oh, yeah. Summer goodness. reading may be ending, but man, the events don't stop. So. Yeah, they yeah. keep on going mm-hmm. through. Yeah, because there's a lot more. I just got us up to the 22nd. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, there's more. Stay but wait, tuned. there's more. Yeah, you can see it in the Insider of Southern Oregon, <laughs> yeah, the full absolutely. schedule here. Yeah, that'll be coming out here in the next, yeah, tomorrow I'll be putting yeah. that out. Yeah, on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Tuesday, that'll be out. Uh-huh. Hey, every Child Curry Charity Golf Tournament going on at the Salmon Run Golf Course. This is happening on the 3rd. Shotgun is at 9 a.m. The net proceeds supports the ongoing work of Every Child Curry. They got 125 per player non-member and 75 per player members. Mm-hmm. So there's a good cause going on right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Coastal Farm and Ranch is presenting the Challenge of Champion Tour, Broncos, Bulls, and Barrels Rodeo. This is happening at the Del Norte Fair and Event Center in Crescent City on the 3rd of August at 4 o'clock. It's everything you expect from a rodeo plus an after party at 7 p.m. featuring the band Moonshine Crazy. And for information about this event, you can call 707 460 Six four nine five five six. Yeah, and I got to tell you, the Del Norte County Fair is going on. But when I was going on the events calendar where I get this stuff at, yeah. all I was getting is these bits and pieces of things that were happening at the thing. But I didn't get a full thing mm-hmm. of the Del Norte County Fair. You know, I mean, that's what I put in the paper and everything because they just didn't have anything out there that I could get. So oh, if you get yeah. online, you might be able to find something on them. Hit Google, Google it, mm, <laughs> and you okay. might be able to find it. Yeah. But I couldn't find anything on Facebook, so okay. there we go. Just let you know why we didn't get it. That is going on this week. I couldn't tell you the dates all the whole thing, but I believe it's second, third, and fourth or whatever. It's a, usually a pretty long thing. It starts like on Thursday or something like that. Right, yeah, so right. Okay. Not too sure. So 
Anyways, we tried. <laughs> hey, there's a tap takeover at Inatega on the 9th from 7 to 10 p.m. This is a fundraiser and a raffle to benefit four-year-old Waylon in his battle with Ewing's sarcoma cancer. And this is featuring live music by Black GTO. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, just to check in here real quick, I just looked it up. And oh, uh, so the Del Norte County Fair does have its own website. And if anybody yeah. wants a full calendar of events that are happening, Sweet. they can go to dnfair.org. Okay, cool. All right. Thank you. There we yeah, go. So See, we try to help as much yeah. as we can. Yeah, and it's got a full schedule of events listed there, dnfair.org. Hey, now it's time for quote from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah, hey, we got a few quotes from actress Maureen O'Hara. She was born August 17th, 1920. She says, every star has that certain something that stands out and compels us to notice them. She says, comedy is difficult, especially slapstick. The trick is to have fun while you are performing it. She goes, I am like many of the women I have played on screen. And last but not least, she says, making movies is just like betting on horses at a racetrack. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, I'm creating. Uh-huh. Anyways, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Marino Hera with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. I know, we're still searching for that sweet spot on I'm, the sound machine. I'm I, know. You, I think I'm going to have to turn it in for another model yeah. because it's driving me nuts. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the Pistol River Concert Association is presenting The Quitters. They're playing at the Pistol River Friendship Club at 24252 Carpenterville Road in Pistol River. And that's happening on the 10th of August from 8 to 10. And Stevie Coyle and Glenn make up a dynamic guitar duo, The Quitters. Having each quit some of the best bands in the business, both are late founding members of The Waybacks. Stevie Coyle has a long and illustrious career as an entertainer that began well before birth. And Glenn Houston's well-decorated history in music is best known for his founding role of powerhouse Americana quintet Houston Jones. As individuals, both are renowned players in music circles. Now they've joined forces to the delight of California audiences to become a right-handed, right-side-up finger-picking and left-handed, upside-down, flat-picking twosome. They say they are mostly acoustic, some electric, much serendipity. That's right. Hey, a lucky seven casino is presenting Petty Rocks, a tribute to Tom Petty. On the 10th at 8 p.m., Petty Rocks will be a lucky seven casino rocking a night to legendary tunes of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Petty Rocks is a Northern California-based tribute to the music of the one-of-a-kind rock and roll icon Tom Petty. Doors are open at 7 p.m. Show begins at 8 at the Taloa Events Center. Tickets are online or at the door. And you must be 21 years older to attend this event. That's right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then Suds on the Coast, a community conversation about substance use disorder, opiates, and our resources, is taking place on the 15th of August from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Gold Beach Library. That's the Curry Library up in Gold Beach. And topics for discussion include overdoses in the community, youth substance abuse, and substance use among unhoused populations. Indeed. Yes. Hey, and the Family Resource Center in Crescent City is presenting the Youth and Family Fair. This is going to be happening at the Beachfront Park. On the 17th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can join them for a fun afternoon with children's crafts, activities, health snacks, and community resources. For information on this event, you can call 707-464-0955, extension 2112. All right, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. G'day, Kat. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that a famous astronomer had a drunk moose for a pet. It's true, and here's the story. The 16th century astronomer who discovered the supernova was known for his sometimes odd behavior. While Tycho Brahe once lost his nose in a duel, kept a dwarf as his gesture, an in-house clairvoyant, and had an ongoing argument with Galileo, and had a pet moose he brought to parties. Even more bizarre than the trained animal's tendencies to walk beside Brahe, like a beloved pet dog and live inside castle walls was the moose's apparently unquenchable thirst for Danish beer. The unlikely duo attracted attention among the astronomer's comrades, and he and the moose were invited to dinner parties to show off the moose's unusually tame behavior. But unfortunately, the moose got a little too tipsy at one of these gatherings. The moose stayed up guzzling beer with noblemen until he was incredibly drunk, and according to Brahe's biographer Pierre Gassendi, the moose stumbled off a flight of stairs 
in the castle before falling off and meeting his untimely demise. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that moose was so high that he couldn't, he thought he could fly. I hope you enjoyed this week's bit of history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Until next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. No. Yeah. For a moose. <laughs> Didn't feel a thing. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> like, so. no, kind of sad. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. That's unfortunate. Not all of them are like great ones, but, you know, yeah, oh. but such as a moose that drinks yeah. too much. Rest in peace, little buddy. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And the fourth annual REMAX Coast and Country Charity Classic for Caitlin's Cause is coming up. Uh, so REMAX, in collaboration with Caitlin's Cause, a local nonprofit organization and 501c3 charity, which works closely with Dornbecker Children's Hospital to provide gifts for children faces illnesses, is inviting folks to join them at the Salmon Run Golf Course for the fourth annual REMAX Coast and Country Charity Classic for Caitlin's Cause. This event takes place on August 23rd, 24th, and 25th at the Salmon Run golf course and the tournament will follow a best ball format where two person teams will participate all with the aim of raising funds for Caitlin's cause. The practice round will be held on the 25th setting the stage for a wonderful event. If you wish to be a part of this meaningful occasion by either participating in the tournament or contributing a donation you can visit their website at kccharityclassic.com. Yeah before we get to the end you know it's funny because it's written down on the other before I printed this one out i wrote down the pirates of the pacific festival is i was coming. gonna say it like it seemed like you kind of forgot yeah, something i didn't was. forget in this one but i forgot it in, in, i forgot it on this one yeah it's at home it's on the one for next week but now like one of the biggest weekends yeah, of the oh year my gosh, you know? guys, and i'm the guy yeah 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 he created the dang thing but yeah mm -hmm. insider of southern oregon events is presenting the pirates of the pacific festival 13th annual that's mm -hmm. our 13th year because of 2020 messed us up but mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. 13 years of doing the pirate thing and i mean yeah it's just one of the biggest events goes on around here and we chrissy and nathan are getting us some bands together and Oh, we're going to have about 72 vendors. So, yeah, it's Exciting. going to be yeah, it's just, uh, two stages, the whole nine yards like we do every year. You all know how it's going down. But, yeah, that's going to be coming up on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. I, next week we'll talk about it again. But <laughs> I'm Absolutely. Looking, like, oh, so no, wow. I know. I was like, wait a second. Like, you, you need to, to talk about this thing, too. Yeah, no, it's, it's an exciting year, too, because we're doing Three Pennies Taking Over the Mermaid. That's pool. right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So donations from that are going to go to Three Penny. And yeah. it's going to be a good cause. We've got, like, fun bracelet-making craft activities yeah. for the kids. It's going to be, yeah. Got some great cosplayers coming this year. Gonna, yeah. How's the mermaids coming They're along? They're looking great. Yeah, yeah we have some really good folks who are just ready to just make magic for Do kids. Do it, do it. Right on. Yeah. Oh, so be, glad you guys took over this too. Gonna be yeah. awesome. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna have a great time. And again, many tips or donations goes yeah. to a good cause. So good deal. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yeah. Totally. That's always a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Both of us are sitting there going. Like, Wait a what? second. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> yeah. We're, now we're getting going back on again. Back <laughs> to the end of August. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. towards the end of August, we got the Port Orford Jubilee Car Show going on at four two three Eleventh Street. This is on the thirty first from eleven a.m. to three p.m. Food trucks, vendors, music, silent auction, fundraiser, car and vendor registration. You can go to the Port Orford Jubilee.org. The fundraiser benefits next year's 4th of July. For more information on this, you got 541 391 2130. I always like yep. to give the car shows a little oh, love. Totally, yeah, especially like. Than the distance, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Those 4th of July firework shows are expensive too. Like, you got to yeah. start fundraising like practically the <laughs> second that the last year ends. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like they say, yeah. yeah, when you start working on the events after they're done, I go the day after the they're day done. After. We're already making changes before the Bigfoot was done. Like I said, we were yep. already talking about next year. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It never stops. Yep. Well, hey, over at the Elks Lodge in Brookings, they're having a Labor Day luau happening on the 31st of August from 3 to 9 p.m. They're going to feature music by Cut It Like the Kings, uh, Ukulele with John, an Emblem's Dessert Table, door prizes, and they're going to have a raffle with proceeds to benefit Jimmy Quella. There's going to be drink specials, barbecue, holy holy chicken, and also a cornhole tournament. And there's going to be tickets on sale in advance for this. Tickets per person are $20, or you can spend 60 and get four tickets. And for more information or to get tickets, you can call 541-469-2169. Yeah, we still got some time here. So we got the 
Curry Public Library at 94341 3rd Street and Gold Beach is presenting Memory Cafe Curry. Memory Cafe Curry will meet the third Wednesday of every month from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. To register for the program, they say please email memorycafe at cplib.net or you can call 541-247-7246. A Memory Cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include, but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in their same situation. And Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. Yes, and KCIW is continuing their Soapbox series. They're giving folks a chance to speak their mind on a show called KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW offers two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. So there are a few rules, of course. There's no cussing, no slandering, no advertising. But other than that, folks are invited to share what's on their mind. The studio is open for recording so Soapbox sessions every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. So just drop on in and record. Yep. And then we got game night at the Williams to Go Griffin, located at 615 Checo Avenue by the Redwood Theater, Tuesdays and Fridays, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, board games, and more. There we go. And then Meals on Wheels is in need of volunteers. If you'd like to do something that will make you and those you help very happy, if you'd like to do something to help give back to the community you love, if you would like to help out your fellow human beings, then Meals on Wheels is looking for you. By delivering a hot meal to those who are home-ridden, you not only help someone who is hungry, but you also bring a bit of kindness into their lives, a friendly face for them to see every day, and social contact that they may not have otherwise. There are three routes that deliver hot meals to about 60 seniors on a daily basis, and each local route takes about one and a half hours to complete. You can volunteer by the day, the week, bi-weekly, bi-monthly, even if it's just one day a week, one day a month, whatever works for you. Every little bit helps. If you're interested in helping with this cause for the community, you can contact the Meals on Wheels coordinator, Debbie, at 714-423-9797. Sweet. Yeah, good stuff right there. Well, hey, that's it. I got no more. It's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producers, Ray and Tom, for all their great work making us look and sound good on the radio. And thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, by going to kciw.org. And while you're there, hey, check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And we are signing off. Hey, please support local businesses. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. Hey, we'll we'll see see it out there. Bam! Bam. (laughs) (laughs) Polite applause. All right. Great uh, great audience, yes. Oh, man. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.